Hey, what's going on, Internet? It's Wednesday. It's time for another episode of Lons TV. I want to kick off today with some kind of exciting, kind of cool news. Uh, I've been invited by TubeFilter.tv, the blog that's about web shows and online series and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all, all sorts of original web video content. Uh, I'm going to be having a column over there every Wednesday. Uh, it'll be a different Lons TV episode where I will review a different web series. Uh, I'm going to call it Web Series Wednesdays because it's so original. So every Wednesday I'll do a web series review on the show, and then I'll have a blog post and review to go along with it that will appear on TubeFilter.tv, and I'll have the link below where you can find that every week. So big thanks to Mark and the team over at TubeFilter. I'm very excited to come on board. I've been reading the blog for, for many years. It's probably the best place on the internet to find out what is going on with web shows because web shows, it's, it's so scattered. I mean, there's a couple good places. Clicker is a good place to find new web shows, but it's so scattered. It's so hard to collect all that's going on out there in one place. I mean, I've been trying to follow as best I can web series and web video for a couple years now, and constantly people are telling me about things that got by me. Just today, somebody said, hey, what do you think of Backwash? which I'd never heard of. I looked it up. It's this original comedy series on Crackle that's great. So, I mean, that's one example of, like, uh, you know, how hard it can be to sort of find everything that's going on out there. And Tube Filter's been a great resource for that. So I'm really excited to uh, come on board and, uh, you know, be writing over there. So check that out every Wednesday. And thank you to the team. It does mean on Wednesdays, at least, I'm going to have to start, like, shaving and showering before I... Obviously, after today. Not today, but... In the future, on Wednesday, I was going to have to, like, remember to clean up my act before I do the show because it's just unprofessional. It's going to be on a blog, people. It's not just YouTube anymore. We're not just digging around. Anyway, uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about today on the show is the remake of Clash of the Titans, which I had not seen. Uh, I did not catch it in theaters. I had wanted to at first because, you know, like everybody who grew up in the 80s, I'd seen the original film and knew the story and, uh, you know, big budget remake with Liam Neeson as Zeus. Like, I was kind of sold. And then I heard it was really, really terrible. And it was one of those movies that was, like, converted digitally to 3D after it was filmed. And I kind of just lost interest. Uh, and I finally caught up with it on Blu-ray from Netflix last night. Uh, and I have to say, only because it was so trashed when it came out and afterwards... It, I, it was much better than I thought it would be. It was at least, like, entertaining. I mean, obviously it has huge problems. I mean, it's it's cheesy, it's pointless, and it's really surprisingly meandering. Like, usually a Hollywood film, you can count on it at least to be, like, beginning, middle, end. Like, it'll have, like, a beat sheet that you could follow. Uh, every once in a while, you'll just have, like, a mainstream movie that's kind of train wrecky and that obviously, like, kind of... The wheels came off at some point. They brought in more people to fix the script, and it just got more convoluted, and they could never kind of smooth it out. Like, Land of the Lost with Will Ferrell uh, feels that way, where it's just like you could feel every scene, like, oh, people were trying so hard to make it sort of fit the structure, and it just was too crazy. Uh, and and uh, this one feels like a little bit like... It's less train wrecky than Land of the Lost, but it feels a little like that, too. Like, you know what the main beats of the story are supposed to be, and it just... It's always taking this weird, circuitous path to get there. It's always kind of awkward, and it doesn't feel like it has a neat through line at all. I mean, there's characters that really their relationships for forming the core of the story and they don't meet until halfway through the movie or more and i mean everybody's got these sort of greek mythology convoluted backstories and so you're never quite sure how everything is fitting together it's it's just it's messy and i think that's probably what most people were responding to that people were used to big budget mainstream films as having like being if nothing else direct like they get you from here to there like Here's the mission, let's go. And this one is like, well, the first part of the mission, we have to go here, and then we'll see what happens, and maybe we'll end up going somewhere else. Um, so, you know, I think that's maybe what was making people feel uh, awkward. Um, you know, I I'll, I'll trash it a little more in a bit, but the, on the plus side, there, there is stuff to like here. I thought the sets were great, and actually, usually when you see ancient Greece or any kind of classical antiquity represented on screen, it's always like all white, like white marble, and not even marble, just like white columns, and everything's clean and white, and white togas, and, and uh, this is, everything is like red and purple and gold and I mean it's not totally realistic I don't think but it's it feels like a more lived-in version of ancient Greece than I can recall seeing recently anyway in like a big budget film and it's it's very just like lavish it's very glossy it's very polished like if you like big effects movies with big sets and 
cool looking costumes and everything like i'm surprised there weren't more people defending it just on those technical merits like it's pretty well put together obviously the story's a mess and and there's more problems i'll talk about but you know i thought uh, the, the the world itself looked cool the monsters look cool most of the action scenes worked for me um so it, it was a lot like uh, the director was louis leterrier i hope i'm pronouncing that right louis leterrier uh and he did the incredible hulk movie with ed norton uh and uh I, it's, I had similar problems with that one. Like, it's stupid and it's dumb and the script doesn't always make sense and a lot of characters and plot lines come out of nowhere and don't go anywhere and it's sloppy. But at the same time, like, it looks cool and the Hulk it's himself was cool and the action was pretty good and it's just, it's lively and it, it moves and, uh, you know, so I, I'll, I'll give him that, that. That there's obviously, this could have been a few steps less watchable and less entertaining, for sure. Having said that, <laughs> it is obvious that they spent all the money they had for actors on Liam Neeson and Ray Fiennes, who play Zeus and Hades. Uh, they're, you know, they're they're big big stars, and so you had to pay them a bunch. But everyone else in the movie, like all the humans, are sort of faceless, like either up and coming actors or kind of just grunts and no names and people that you don't recognize and and they're not they're, they're sort of that's the b cast there's this a-list cast that's the gods in mount olympus and then there's the b cast that's everyone else uh no one in the human cast really makes an impression at all i think except mads mickelson um he's the actor who's he's the villain in casino royale uh he's a he's a terrific actor he's also in valhalla rising last year which is a I don't know if it's a great movie, but an interesting movie. Uh, and uh, he plays he plays Draco, uh, and it's a decent character. And he's the only human that sort of stands out at first because you're like, is that the dude from Casino Royale? But he's he's doing a pretty good job. Every other human is like faceless, bland. Who is that person? You couldn't even tell them apart. Like, there's a couple roles in the movie that if you had other actors in there, I think you'd probably remember that those are real people. And in this one, they all just kind of blend. It's like, oh, that's the, the team. Like, that's the, the background guys. Um, and that's, that's a problem because you're supposed to be sympathizing with the humans. Um, and Sam Worthington, again, the lead here. And I have never... I've seen this guy in, like, seven or eight movies now. He seems to be in everything. I've never seen him in anything where he's made any kind of impression. I mean, I like, I literally forget what he looks like between movies. And I mean, I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Like he was in the Terminator movie and he was in Avatar. <clears throat> now he's in this one. I'm sure there's two or three others I'm forgetting. And I mean, the guy is the same in every movie. He can't emote at all. He's a complete like zero, like I, I, it's rare I will defend, at least in certain roles, you know? Like Keanu Reeves gets a lot of crap, but he's been good in at least three or four movies. Matthew McConaughey is legitimately one of the most irritating actors like ever, but even he's okay in a few movies. Like he's terrific as Wooderson. Like Sam Worthington's never been Wooderson level in anything ever. Can we please stop putting him in these movies I otherwise want to watch? It's just, it's getting like unforgivable. Like what do people see? Is he just cheap? I don't get it. Um, a couple other things I want to complain about. Uh, there's a couple little cutesy shout outs and references to the original film. Um, yeah, I, that's almost never necessary. Those little wink, like every once in a while it works. So they figure out a way to do it. Most of the time it comes off really lame and cheesy and this time is no exception they're even working like a reference to Bubo the mechanical owl that's one of the more memorable things from the original uh, 80s version and uh, they can't figure out how to make it fit into this world at all it just it's really distracting and uh, it, it's just like why put it in there if you can't come up with like a way to do it that fits into the story and I admit it can't be that easy with a mechanical owl but then just you know don't bother and it, it, it's okay people will forgive you uh, the last thing I want to complain about is there is one scene where Perseus, who's Sam Worthington's character, goes to visit some witches, and the design for the witches has been blatantly stolen from Pan's Labyrinth. Now, I don't know, I'm sure Guillermo del Toro's influenced by Greek philosophy, so you could say that, like, well, really, he's borrowing from this, but no, 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 this is, like, wholesale theft of that whole look. There's a million ways you could imagine these witches based on their description in the original mythology, uh, aside from what Guillermo del Toro already did in Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, that is really, like, shameful and embarrassing. I mean, it's so blatant. Anybody who had seen Pan's Labyrinth would immediately go, those look like the monsters from Pan's Labyrinth. So, that's it for Launch TV. I am out of time. Uh, Clash of the Titans, eh, not as bad as people had said. Thanks very much for joining me. Check out uh, Web Series Wednesdays on Tube Filter, and I will see you next time.